What up guys? Today let's discuss how to make your relationship drama free. Now, I realize that whenever I tell people that we should discuss this topic, their ears light up. Immediately they're thinking, yes, please tell me, how can I make my relationship drama free? With the mindset that they have, their partner is dramatic and they would like to find a way to decrease that drama. But then think about it. What if you are the drama in the relationship? Because definitely, if it was your partner that I was talking to, your partner to be like, yes, 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 let's, let's talk about this, please. I want to hear how to make my partner, you know, less dramatic. Everybody thinks the other person is the drama. So you never know. Maybe you are the one who's bringing drama into your relationship, into your relationship. Stay with me. Now, there are three ways drama enter into a relationship. Maybe you are dramatic. You are the one who is dramatic with the headache. Maybe your partner is the one who is dramatic. Or maybe both of you just have drama. Or maybe both of you are incompatible and you need to start facing that fact. Or maybe both of you just need to have a wake-up call and start knowing how to deal with issues. So, let's talk about this in two parts. I think we have to break it into two. Let's first talk about new relationships that are just starting from the scratch. New relationships where you still have puppy love, you know. You guys can actually, you know, set your standards now. Put a system into place so that you don't get to be like relationships that are already long term that they've now had a couple of bad incidences that now formed part of who they are as a couple so we we'll talk about the people in a new relationship then on the other part we we'll talk about long term relationships relationships that have been through many storms can they find their way back are they broken or they're just bent so we'll discuss that now for new relationships let me face you people now if you're starting a new relationship i beg you please do not bring old problems into a new relationship don't suffocate this new thing you're trying to nurture before it can even breathe. Whatever insecurities, whatever vengeance you had with your ex, let it stay there. Like they always say, don't deal with your ex by being paranoid with your next. Let's say for instance now, if you're a lady and you were very submissive in your last relationship, you invested a lot of emotions and you thought, oh, this is it. And then the guy you hooked up with now happens to be somebody who took your submissiveness and sacrifices for granted. So now you are with this new guy and your guards are up. You know, you are like, no, 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 there are some things I will not take from the onset. Now, listen to me. This person you are with now is a totally different human being. Emotions survive after memories vanish, which means that even though you might have forgotten about your ex, some reflex actions are still in place that might make you be dealing with your new boyfriend just because of some foundation that your old boyfriend laid down. So you need to understand that this is a separate human being and let his own record speak for himself. Yes, by all means, understand your worth, know your value and walk from there, but give room for this new person. And also if you're a guy, maybe with your ex-girlfriend, maybe she liked money too much, maybe you made a lot of sacrifices, and despite all that, she still went and still did nonsense, you know? This new person you are with, you have to let their own track record speak for them. So in a new, don't, 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 what, what's, that, what's that thing they always say? Don't paint, don't use an old brush to brush a new painting or something, I've forgotten that saying, cha. So you need to let this relationship walk on its own feet, by itself. Let it be what it is. That's for people in new relationships. Another thing again is, don't use people's experiences to act in your own relationship. Don't use people's experiences to judge what is going on in your own relationship. Or the fact that you read about this on the blogs, you read about that. You now say, hey, me, my own relationship. Not. Don't invite energy that's not yours. Don't play your own game with the cards that another person has been dealt. Half of the people that come out and say their story, half of it is lie. They will not tell you the parts where they messed up too. So don't put energy that's not your own because there's so much social activity going around that before you know you are dealing with your new boyfriend just because one girl said that her own boyfriend got married behind her back. That's not your own portion. So act like that. Deal with your own situation your own way. Now another thing in a new relationship is talking about the past. There's this thing that men do in a new relationship. He'll keep hammering his girl. Tell me everything you've done. Tell me who you have been with. Tell me about your past. Don't worry. I just want to hear. It's where we are going that matters, not where we've been. Look, it's a lie. Men want to hear the truth, but they cannot handle it. If you have, in case you have some freaky freaky in your past and you tell him, there's no doubt without a doubt that he will not start doubting you after that. He will start, he might start using it against you. So paint a picture of who you want to be. Don't tell him, don't draw a grand image of who you used to be. You draw his focus onto the person that you are going to become in this new relationship that you and him are establishing. If you are a guy too, for instance, let's say in your last relationship you cheated before. 
Why are you going to tell your new girl that, oh, you know, so she was not angry with me because she caused me cheating? Why would you plant such a seed of insecurity into your new relationship? Because she's going to look at you like, oh, damn, so that means you can cheat on me. And men also have this thing we do. We always want to boast, like, you know, about a lot of chicks, but now nah, I'm a changed guy. Be careful when you go around there. I, yes, I know girls like the fact that maybe their boy had a, has a, a bit of bad boyism, but be careful. Don't go and over boast to the point that she now looks at you that, are you sure you're not going to go back to all those your player ways? So, this past thing, you need to be careful. Now, let's say, for instance, you're a girl now, and your boyfriend asks you, have you given anybody a BJ blowjob before? Maybe you have. I'm not saying you have, but you look like you have. <laughs> anyway, let's say your boyfriend asks you. You see, you don't need to go into all the details of, I did it like this, I did it like this, I can blow, blow dick more than I can, anybody can blow a saxophone. You don't need to go descriptive. Just go basic about it. I'm not saying you should deny your past. I'm saying downplay your past. You just have to downplay it because that's not the focus anymore. The past is in the past. Men will always do these things the most. I want to know. I want to know. If you know maybe there's a guy that he might know and you've had something with and he might find out, it's good if you just place that on the table. But if he if, if wouldn't know, you just need to watch the situation but, because past is not a very good area to go to. Or you can just leave it out if. Honestly, you can leave it out. Every guy wants a good girl that's bad with only him. Every girl wants a bad boy that's good to only her. When you and your guy are starting and you know that you can ride the dick from now till 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, eh, you don't need to display all your talents immediately. If he's still going through a phase of getting to know you, be unleashing the hole in you one step after the other. You know, so when he starts seeing it, on one day just show him skill, you'll be like, How did you do that? You know, you'll be like, Oh, baby, you're the one, you're the one teaching me bad things. Whereas you know that you said you are queen bad, but that's for you to know. You unleash it one step at a time because if you go and knock his brains out from day two, you'll not start saying, I know men, I know men of today, I don't know about tomorrow, but men, I know that's how you would think. Now, because you guys are a new, fresh relationship. You need to always be your creative self. See, the absence of creativity in a relationship is the beginning of boredom. You need to always stay creative. For instance, as a guy, you are still winning her. You are still getting to know her. You are still impressing her. So you have to keep putting this fire into the picture. You have to put in the work. If you just throw your hands down, bah. for instance, in marriages, that's where a lot of marriages are suffering from. Both the couple have given up on playing to each other's fantasies. You cannot do that. Try and set that standard from now. Keep playing to each other's fantasies. Not that you should not be yourself, but be your creative self. Work, 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 work. May the thing not go la 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 no. You see, that's what Rihanna said. So the reason you not go and la no, you go and explode. You know, as a man. Your woman still wants to be chased. She still wants to be sought after. She still wants to feel like you've gotten her, but you feel like you still need to have a reason to, you know, hold on tight to her. She wants you to be territorial. She wants you to be jealous of her. And for the women, you, I know you're not comfortable. You can fat in front of him. You can strip off your wig. But stripping off your wig when you, are, when you get home takes you from being Beyonce straight to being like Mr. Ibu. Look, we're human beings. We're not human beings. We're always being in a process. So this relationship that you're on, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's not a destination. It's not as if you get to a decision of achieving perfect relationship. If the relationship is perfect today, tomorrow it will want to be imperfect again. You will take it up to perfection. Do you understand? So you always have to keep playing to your man's fantasies. I know it's not easy, you know, being, making, being like a slave queen in, even around the house. But Omo, um, don't joke with it, man. Your man, you want to be your man's sex idol. You want him to look at you like some goddess. So you always have to put in the effort. Men are very physical. Do it for yourself because even you yourself will be feeling good. Simple. Now, back to the guys again. In a new relationship, when you guys start having been at loggerheads, don't leave her complaints unattended to for too long. Don't, if she's had something she's nagging about, something she's complaining about, you know, you ha make sure you attend to it before it turns to the point where she feels, I'm always telling you this and you don't pay attention. Women have different ways they communicate. You need to start hearing what she's not saying. You know, the relationship is still fresh. Start, you know, working on things now before you guys get to that point where it's just like, let's just continue in this relationship. You have to keep giving each other different shades of yourself, 50 shades of boo, you know, keep showing each other different shades of yourself, working on it, 
play to each other's fantasies. Do not fall into a routine. Routine kills. Routine kills. Once you start putting, once you start just doing the relationship because we've been dating for three years, I shall know this person I will marry. But when let me go outside to go and get now, nah, fuck, nah, man, that's 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 becoming torture. Your relationship should be where you are even getting the spice from, but it takes work. It takes work. Once you are putting this work into it, then you won't experience something I call the burden of commitment. A lot of people are going through the burden of commitment right now. They don't want to leave their partner, but they are not getting the fire from their partner. The fire is not always going to be there, you know. The fire is not always going to be there. Butterflies are always not going to be in your stomach. But some relationships are so drab, so bad, that it's sad. Don't get to that stage. If you are just starting, don't get to that stage. Now, let's go on and talk about long-term relationships. Huh? Huh?